Hey everyone. So in this video, I'd like to talk about hyperbolas. And so we saw that for ellipses, their equations are of the form x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to one. And if we take this sum and instead make it a difference, uh, then we end up with another kind of conic section known as a hyperbola. And so because order of subtraction matters, um, we actually have two different kinds of hyperbolas that are possible. Um, so here if I have the x term as my positive term and the y term as my negative term, then we have this horizontally oriented hyperbola. We have these two curves that are symmetric to one another, sort of bowl-shaped curves that open left and right. Here this is the case when we have this x term that's positive. If we instead have this y term as positive and we're subtracting away x squared over a squared, then we get a vertically oriented hyperbola instead. The two bowl-shaped curves open up and down. And so one thing I want to mention is that you might look at these two bowl-shaped curves when you look at a hyperbola and think that they, they kind of look like parabolas. But actually, uh, these hyperbolas are better represented by lines than by, by parabolas. Um, actually, these hyperbolas have a pair of asymptotes every time, and when you zoom out, the curves get really close to these two lines. And so here, I'll draw them in the left example. It looks something like this, and maybe like this. And when it comes to graphing hyperbolas, which we'll talk about uh, in a moment later on in this video, we'll typically use these asymptotes actually to help us graph these hyperbolas. So here's the graph of the hyperbola that we were just looking at a moment ago. And here are the asymptotes that I drew in on that picture. And if we zoom out really, really far, we see that these two curves really hug the, the two asymptotes, the two lines that I've included in our picture. And so this is just to really illustrate that uh, these two lines really are going to do a great job of helping us graph uh, this hyperbola, the two branches of this hyperbola. So just like with ellipses, there's a lot of different terminology for hyperbolas. And so let's use this hyperbola pictured here to introduce this different terminology. And so we've already introduced one piece of terminology. We've said that hyperbolas have asymptotes. They have these two lines that uh, the, the parts of the graph uh, approach as we zoom really far out from the center. So these are the asymptotes. And so Every hyperbola also has a center. Uh, the two asymptotes cross at the center point, um, and this, this center is right in between the very tips of the two branches of our hyperbola. And so also, uh, we should talk about these points here, the very tips of these two branches. Uh, these are called vertices. So this is also a vertex. Um, and then the line that goes through both of the vertices and the center, uh, this is called the transverse axis. So I don't know how much we'll use this term, but uh, it is worth knowing. So transverse axis, that's the line that goes through both of the vertices and the center. And then just like with ellipses, we have foci. So here, this is a focus. Maybe I'll just label this one down here, so foci. Uh, there's two foci for every hyperbola, just like with ellipses. And so let's talk about these foci a little bit more. So when we talked about ellipses, we said that uh, the foci in an ellipse are special in the sense that if I take any point on my ellipse and I look at the distance between the foci and that point and I add them up, we'll get the same value no matter what point we use on our ellipse, right? So here, maybe the picture to have in mind is if I take this point on my ellipse here and the two points in my, in my ellipse are my foci, uh, then if I take the distances between those points, 
And so I called this D1 and I called this D2. Well, the idea is that if I look at another point, let's say that point is out here, I will hear this distance added on with this distance, and the distance between that point and the foci. Well, the sum of these uh, blue distances is going to give us the same values as some of these green distances, no matter what point we choose on our ellipse. All right, so that's what's special about the foci of an ellipse. What about for a hyperbola? So for hyperbolas, uh, actually the differences between the distances of the points and the foci, uh, those will give us the same value up to a sign. And so we say that the absolute value of the difference of the distances to the foci will be the same for any point on the hyperbola. So let's say I take this point here, and I look at the distance between this point and the two different foci. So here is one distance, I'll label this D1, and here's another distance, D2. So what I'm saying is that if I look at another point on the ellipse, so maybe I'll choose this one out here, doesn't matter which point I choose. Uh, if I look at this point and I compute the distances between this point and the foci, so here's D3 and D4, the idea is that if I take the differences of these distances, and I'll write them in order, so D1 minus D2, and I look at D3 minus D4, these are going to be the same up to a sign. And so another way of saying is that, it, is that if you take the absolute value of D1 minus T, D2, you're going to get the same thing as D, the absolute value of D3 minus D4. The distances, the difference in the distances between the points on a hyperbola and the foci, uh, they're going to be the same all the time up to a sign. So now that we know what a hyperbola is and some of the terminology surrounding hyperbolas, uh, what can they be used for? What do they model? And so here's a list of some of the things that hyperbolas can model. Um, one example is the path of a comet that's traveling really fast. So if we have the sun at one of the focus points and a comet is traveling too fast to return to uh, the solar system, uh, its trajectory will be modeled by a hyperbola. Similarly, if we have a planet and we have a spacecraft traveling nearby that planet and the spacecraft is traveling faster than the escape velocity of that planet, then again, the path of the spacecraft will be modeled uh, by a hyperbola. And the last example uh, I'd like to share is, is an architectural one. So uh, sometimes hyperbolas are used for the shape of a tower. Um, namely, tall towers or cooling towers at coal and nuclear power plants. So the benefit of hyperbolas in this case is that uh, they're actually very efficient with the material uh, that, they, that they use to create this tower, um, but also provide uh, very strong support. And so here, you, know, you can kind of think of this picture in mind. Um, it's actually called uh, hyperboloid, a three-dimensional hyperbola, but the hyperbola in this picture uh, kind of run along the sides of our structure. So let's now look at graphing hyperbolas, and let's start by graphing hyperbolas that are horizontally oriented, right? So they have an x term that's positive. So here, this hyperbola will have a center at the point 0, 0, and that's just because here we're just dealing with an x squared and a y squared. It's not like x minus some quantity squared or x plus some quantity squared. Um, here we're just dealing with the center at the origin. So to graph this hyperbola, we want to sketch the asymptotes. And so to sketch the asymptotes, one common technique is to uh, actually sketch a box first using the R values A and B. So here, if I look A units to the left and to the right of my center, 
So here this distance is A and this distance is A as well. And I look B units up and down for my center. And I form this box. Actually, it turns out that the diagonals of this box uh, give us our asymptotes. So here, here's one diagonal, and here's another diagonal. It's not the best box, but um, the diagonals are the lines through the corners of this box. These are our asymptotes. And so here are these, these asymptotes, they're lines, and they have a slope of plus or minus b over a. Right? b is the, uh, the denominator of the, the y term, where b squared is, and a squared is the denominator of the x term, and b over a, plus or minus b over a, these are the slopes of our asymptotes. And then if we look to the left and to the right of this box, a units, so, or not to the left and right of this box, left and right of the center A units. So here, at this point and this point, so the left and right side of our box, these provide our vertices. And so from here to sketch our hyperbola, uh, well, we just sketch the, the curve that goes through these points and approaches our asymptotes. So here, and I can sketch out one hyperbola one branch of the hyperbola like so, and then another branch like so. So here I know that this hyperbola is oriented left and right, it's oriented horizontally. It, the branches go through uh, the, the two different vertices and then uh, they approach the asymptotes away from the vertices. So let's use these ideas to sketch the graph of x squared over four minus y squared over 25 is equal to one. And first notice that a is equal to two, right? This is x squared over two squared minus y squared over, well, y squared over five squared is equal to one. And so this tells us that, you know, here we have our center point at zero comma zero, two units to the left and two units to the right, five units up and down. Gives us our box that we can use to help us sketch the asymptotes of our hyperbola. And so here the asymptotes come from the diagonals of this box. Right? They're essentially lines with the slope of 5 over 2. And so here maybe one asymptote looks like so. And the other asymptote looks like so. Well, here are the vertices of our graph are on the left and right side of this box. And then away from these vertices, uh, our graph just approaches our asymptotes. So here, the left branch looks something like this. And the right branch looks something like this. So this is a very wide hyperbola. It's really hard to uh, get a full sense of the picture just from uh, this sort of zoomed in portion near the vertices, but this is a rough sketch of how the center of this looks. Um, and if we zoomed out, it would look closer and closer to uh, our asymptotes. So let's do the same thing, but for this equation here. And so the first thing I like to notice is that here we have a different center than zero comma zero, right? The center is now the point negative three comma two. Right, just like with circles and ellipses, uh, where the equations are of the form x minus h squared and y minus k squared, here uh, we have, because we have plus three, we have a center x value of negative three. Because we have minus two, we have a center y value of positive two. And so here we can rewrite this equation as x plus three squared over three squared minus y minus two squared over two squared is equal to one. So here we've got the center negative three comma two, so this point here, 
And our box comes from looking out three units to the left and three units to the right of our center point and two units up and down from our center point. And so here's our box. And then here are the asymptotes. So I get another one out here. And so here are our vertices on the left and right side of this box. And the graph of the hyperbola looks something like this, right? So it goes through the vert vertices and approaches the asymptotes. But because the x term is positive, uh, we're just looking out left and right of these asymptotes. So when it comes to graphing hyperbolas where the y term is positive, everything is the same as before, except the hyperbola is now oriented vertically and the vertices lie on the top and the bottom of this box that we sketch out. And so here, if I look at this equation, um, the first thing I notice is that the center is, well, here maybe think about for a moment what the center ought to be. Well, the x term ought to be 1, right? So here we have x minus 1 squared, so the center x value is going to be 1. And then we have y minus 3 squared, so the center y value is going to be 3. Now here also, uh, you know, notice that I can write this as x minus 1 squared over 1. And this tells me this 16 is, is really 4 squared. And this 1 here, well, that's 1 squared. Right, so this tells me that here we're going to be at the center point of 1 comma 3 and 4 units up and down is how big my box is going to be. So maybe I'll erase this 1 comma 3. So uh, 4 units up and down is going to give me the height of my box. And then 1 unit left and right is going to give me the width of my box and so this is what the box roughly looks like. And then I can sketch my asymptotes. And so because the y term is positive, we have this vertically oriented hyperbola and uh, away from my vertex, I'm going to go up and down. And so that's just a rough sketch of this hyperbola. So let's do the reverse now. Let's start with the graph of our hyperbola. And let's go and find the equation. So there's a few things we need. We need the center point, and we need the values a and b that belong in the denominators of each term. And so the center we can see right away, right? So here's this center point. It's the point negative one comma two. And then what about A and B? Well, A is a distance uh, horizontally, because this is a horizontally oriented uh, hyperbola, A is a distance from the center to one of the vertices. Right? so here that tells us that A is equal to two. Now what about B? We can imagine drawing the box that gives us our diagonals for our uh, asymptotes. And we can see that really for us to have the right diagonals, the box needs, needs to be uh, one unit uh, away from our center vertically um, in the up and down direction. So here that tells us that B is equal to one. So here we've got the equation x plus 1, or right, x minus negative 1, so x plus 1 squared over 2 squared minus y minus 2 squared over 1 squared. This ought to equal 1. This is our equation for our hyperbola. So let's do the same thing for this vertically oriented hyperbola. Let's find the equation of this graph. 
So this one's a little bit more challenging because we don't have the asymptotes, but one thing we can identify right away is the center. Right? So here's the center. And this is the point negative three comma negative four. And because this parabola, not parabola, hyperbola is vertically oriented, we can see the B value right away. And so here we see that B is equal to two. And you might feel uh, like you want to sketch out the asymptotes and approximate um, the value of A, but we can actually find the value uh, exactly. All right, so here maybe we can write out what we have so far and see if we can draw any extra conclusions. So here, this is a vertically oriented hyperbola, so we have y minus the y value of the center, so y plus four squared over, and this is going to be b squared, so b squared, that's two squared is four, then minus x minus the x value squared, so x plus three squared, we don't have a, and this is equal to one. And so how do we find the value of a? Well, any graph, for any graph, the points on the graph should satisfy the equation of the graph. So if I look at this point, negative two comma zero, negative two for x and zero for y, when I plug it into our equation, it should make the equation true. That's what it means for uh, the graph and the equation to correspond, is that points on the graph of the equation should make the equation true. And so let's plug this point in and expect it to be true, and let's see what A turns out to be. All right, so here we've got zero for Y, right? Zero plus four squared over four minus uh, well, negative two for x, so negative two plus three squared over, and we're missing still a squared, is equal to one. And so here this tells us that we've got uh, 16 over four minus negative, no, no, we've got not negative, we've got positive one squared is just one, over a squared is equal to one, in other words, we have four minus one over a squared is equal to one. And subtracting four from both sides gives us one over a squared is equal to negative three. And so this makes one over a squared equal to positive three. If I multiply both sides by a squared, I get one is equal to three a squared. And dividing both sides by three, I get one third is equal to a squared. And so this tells us that a is equal to, if I take the square root of both sides, well, I'd have to take plus or minus the square root of both sides, um, but here it's enough to just have a be uh, one over the square root of three. And so here, if we go back to our equation, a is one over the square root of three, and so a squared is just one over three, and so this is the equation of our hyperbola.